Over the past few months, we've been working across four different schools in Plymouth to come up with some new ideas for our new Above Bounds show. The four schools we've worked in are Stoke Danmore Community College, St Peter's, College Road and Marlborough. And together we've been running workshops in those schools that cover the five W's, who, what, when, where and why. When we looked at who, we realised that the young people loved this balance between balanced characters such as good versus evil, as well as grotesque characters that include goblins or long-nosed characters such as Pinocchio. When we looked at where, we discovered that the young people really liked this idea of a dystopian world. Um, but we kind of took this on a different tangent and focused on this idea of creating a magical world. When we looked at when, we focused on talking with young people about what it's like to live in the year 2020. They came up with loads of ideas and this gave us a rough idea of whether they'd like our story to be uh, set in the past, present or the future. When we looked at what, we asked the young people to vote on a series of parallel um, opinions such as good and evil or dark and light. They gave us their popular feedback and from those words that they chose that had the most votes, they created their own stories, which we took away and used as inspiration to come up with um, our performance ideas. And the last question we asked them was why? Why is it important that we're making this show today? And what do they want us to say and talk about? Some of the ideas that they came up with was that it's important for young people's voices to be heard in society today. And some common themes that came up were love, family and connections. We brought together all these ideas and our next plan was to go back to the young people and ask them, how were we going to put all of these ideas together? Before we were able to go back into the schools to ask the young people how they wanted us to tell the story, unfortunately the schools had to close due to coronavirus, which was definitely the right idea, but it threw our project up in the air a little bit. And it was my job as the producer to work out how we could still move forward. Could the artists take those young people's ideas and make them into stories which we could then send back to the young people to vote on before we made them into a piece of theatre? Or perhaps something that they could enjoy at home? Well, we thought so, because so many amazing ideas had come up through the who, what, where, when and why sessions that we thought we had plenty of juicy material to work with. Our next job was to come up with three stories for the children in our project schools to vote on. We didn't have to work hard to think of options because the young people we'd worked with in the schools all had such brilliant ideas. The difficult part was choosing which one to use. Once we'd chosen our three stories, we started to make what's known as a dramatic arc for each of the stories. You've probably done something similar in schools. Sometimes it's called a story mountain. This is a really important stage because there's certain rules and shapes which all good stories follow. And when you're making a new one, you need to make sure that it follows these rules. Dramatic arcs work like this. They usually start with life being interrupted by an unusual event, which triggers an adventure of some kind. On their adventure, the hero or heroine meets lots of different challenges and everything builds up to a climax. Eventually, they find a solution to the problem and everything slowly gets resolved. Eventually, life goes back to normal, but it's usually a new normal because of the adventure. Once we'd come up with our stories, we had to make videos to sell them to the young people in the schools. Uh, in these, we thought about how to tell the story. So we had uh, storyteller, puppetry, music, pictures even, uh, really good ways of understanding the stories. 